Welcome back to my journey of becoming a pro in Blender. Before we start the second part, be sure to check out the first one. I spent the first three days learning the basic controls and fundamentals of Blender. Part one was a success, but I believe we can ramp things up a bit. We're not gonna waste any time. Grab your favorite snack and drink, and let's get right into it. While on my lunch break at work, I did some scrolling on social media to find the best YouTube channels to find some good Blender tutorials. Which leads us to our next tutorial by Ryan King Art. This was a simple tutorial which guides us to create a glowing mushroom you will see at the end of day 4. I really enjoyed this tutorial. It taught me the basics of UV mapping. And I learned that this is a very important technique to learn in Blender. I did struggle learning it a bit, but overall I got the concept. It's basically just unfolding your 3D model into a flat 2D surface. After the UV unwrapping, we're just going to draw some details to bring more life to this mushroom. I decided to go with a happy and a sad face. I wanted to bring some originality to it. I didn't want to follow the tutorial 100%. Now we're just coming to the conclusion of the modeling and the painting. I decided to add some blue dots and on top of that we're going to add some bloom to add the finishing touches to our mushrooms. After that we're going to duplicate our mushroom three times and then we're going to add some lighting to it. After that we're going to add the most important part to our finishing scene that's going to be adding the base. To make the base look more like dirt we use a lot of geometry nodes. Another good technique that I learned from this tutorial was adding the Node Wrangler. The Node Wrangler is a free add-on, but I believe it will be very useful in the future. And that's going to be it for day four. This was a very, very helpful tutorial. And you already know, the link will be in the description. On days five and six, I found a very good tutorial by Harry Helps. We're going to be making a cool portal, model, and animation. If you're a beginner to Blender like me, I highly recommend this tutorial. It was very easy to follow. I also learned a lot of good techniques with modeling. After this tutorial, I was really comfortable with using extrude, also my loop cuts to adjust the points so the altar can look more rigid and realistic. After modeling the altar, we're going to go into the stones that's floating around the portal. And we're going to use a similar technique that we use with the altar to make the stones look more realistic and rigid, simply by just adjusting the points in edit mode. And we're just going to model each stone differently so each stone can look organic. The next step is going to be adding the symbols to each room. After that, we're going to be using the solidify modifier to add some depth and thickness to each symbol. This was my first time using this modifier, but I can definitely see it being useful in the future. Like we did with the stones, we're going to just go through each symbol and add some originality to each one. And we're going to add some stones to the base. And how we did earlier with adjusting the points in edit mode, we're going to do the same thing but just with the base stone. Now we're going to head to my favorite part of the tutorial, the rendering. We're going to use some geometry nodes to add some texture to our portal. I decided to go my own route again with the colors. I decided to go with a cooler palette and I'm very happy with how this one turned out. Now we're going to go to object to object and add the same materials to each one. We're going to add some light and bloom to add some more depth to our model. Now we're going to be at the conclusion of this tutorial. We're going to finish up with adding some animation with the keyframes. This was a really good tutorial. I would definitely put this in my top three for beginner Blender tutorials. That's it for this one. Here's the finished product. Let's roll into day seven and eight. I wanted to find a different website other than YouTube to find my next tutorial. I've been seeing a lot of ads for Skillshare, so I decided to check it out. I found an underrated product tutorial by Allah Adin Zaire. This tutorial was a hidden gem for product modeling. It was very easy to follow and I enjoyed how the scene came out at the end. This tutorial taught me how to set up a scene and make it look clean and professional. I got a lot of practice with geometry nodes and UV unwrapping, which I definitely needed. Now we're just going to add the finishing touches to our scene. We're going to add some light. Also, we're going to use the HDRI to enhance it even more. This was my first time using the HDRI and I was really impressed with how it came out. Now we're just going to add the logo using UV unwrapping. After that, we're going to use our geometry nodes to add some noise and texture. This is going to bring some realism to the product. 
Overall, this was a really good tutorial and I highly recommend it. After finishing all the steps to the tutorial, I decided to make my own custom animation. It came out pretty good and I was impressed with how this came out. I hope you guys enjoy it and that's going to be it for day 7 and 8. Before I show you guys the finished product, make sure to leave a like and comment. Also subscribe. After doing my first product animation, I had so much fun with it that I decided to do another one. On days 8 and 9, I decided to follow Smee's full product animation tutorial that I found on Skillshare. As you can see in the video, we started this tutorial modeling a cylinder into a cone. This was really simple and easy to do. All you have to do is simple. Adjust the vertexes and edit mode of the cylinder to match the bottle reference image. After we add our finishing touches to that, we're going to begin the process of modeling the lid. After doing this tutorial, I realized how important reference images are. I will definitely be using them in the future. To model this lid, I realized it's similar to modeling the can. We're just going to manipulate the vertexes into shape. I know I'm following tutorials, but I can definitely see my improvement in Blender. Not specifically talking about my modeling or my rendering, I'm talking about my muscle memory and my control knowledge. This tutorial went by pretty smooth. I really didn't have no troubles with it. Also, if you're a beginner like me and you want to try this tutorial out, the link will be in the description. The next step would be adding the Red Bull logo onto the cam model itself by using UV unwrapping. I did run into some struggles with my UV unwrapping, but over time, we got it together. Also, we're going to add our shading and textures using geometry nodes. Adding the textures and the effects made the can look way more appealing. Next, we're going to head to the final steps. We're going to add some lights to add some depth and flair to this final render. I also learned some cool techniques in the animation portion of this tutorial. Parenting your model to an empty shape will make animation so much easier. And that's going to be it for days 8 and 9. Feel free to comment if you have any tips or suggestions for me in this video. Since starting the challenge, this has been my favorite tutorial by far. Enough talking. Here's the final product. I hope you guys enjoy it. On day 10, I decided to go back to YouTube for my next Blender tutorial. I decided to do the Polygon Runaways Juice Cup tutorial. This tutorial started really simple. First, we got a circle object and extruded it to be the form of a cup. After that, we added some loop cups to add some ridges to it. We also added some bevels to smooth it out. To add the liquid, we extruded another circle face inside of the cup this time. After that, we're going to add a displace modifier, then we're going to add a cloud texture. Polygon Runway did move at a fast pace, but overall, I really enjoyed the tutorial. Back to the video, we're going to parent the liquid object to an empty to get that real liquid movement. To get the shape of the ice, we used a cube that we extruded the corner edges. After that, we added a subdivision to give it a real smooth finish. Now we're just going to duplicate our ice inside the juice to give it an authentic look. Then we added some small bubbles to give it a carbonated feel. After that, we're just going to add an animation to the bubbles. This is coming out really nice. In the next step, we will use an HDRI and add some contrast to the lighting. In the most recent tutorials, I realized how valuable HDRIs are. To get the cup to a glass texture, we lowered the IDR. We also heightened the metallic in the geometry nodes. And we're just going to copy that same shader to the ice. This will enhance the ice to a more realistic look. To get the liquid to look like juice, we added a gradient map in the geometry nodes. Now we're just going to add the finishing touches. We're going to mess with the lighting. Also, we're going to edit the composition of the picture. Next, I'm going to add a texture to the table and I'm going to mess with the colors. I decided to go with a lighter tan. I'm going to add one more light source and that's going to be it for day 10. I hope you guys enjoyed the finished product. On day 11, I went back to Skillshare. I found a cool abstract animation by Isaiah Cardona. I had a very easy time with this tutorial and knocked it out pretty fast. The modeling for this tutorial was an easy process. We simply just used a deform modifier on a torus object. Then we're going to edit a plane behind our object to make a nice backdrop. Then we're going to get our camera in a nice angle for the finished product. We're also going to use some modifiers for our animation. 
Then we're going to add some geometry nodes to add some flair to the final object. Overall, this tutorial was a success. I enjoyed this one a lot because it gave me a nostalgic feeling of the old LimeWire music animations. Since this is a simple tutorial, I don't want to waste too much time, so I'm going to let you guys enjoy the time lapse and enjoy the finished product. Moving on to days 12 and 13, we're going to be making a cool pokeball from the help from Kaizen from CG Cookie. I've been seeing a lot of recommendations for CG Cookie, so I finally decided to check it out. Modeling the pokeball overall was not that difficult. Kaizen gives good direction at a good pace which makes it easy for beginners. A nice technique I learned on this tutorial was using a mirror modifier. Mirror is better for your computer, also the mirror modifier can speed up the workflow. After completing all the modeling, we're going to switch to shader mode. We're going to add geometry nodes to get the colors of the Pokeball. Then we're going to lower the metallic and the IDR to give it a more metallic look. If you're a big Pokemon fan like me, comment what's your favorite Pokemon in the comments. Mine is Infernape. Back to the video, we're just going to add the finishing touches to the materials. We're going to add more geometry nodes to get a plastic look for the middle section and the bottom. Next, we're going to try to add the sticker. I could not get this sticker to fold around my Pokeball, so I decided to leave it alone. Only having two hours from my challenge, I decided to use my time more wisely. Now we're just going to add the final animation to day 12 through 13. This was a very easy tutorial to follow and I highly recommend it if you're a beginner. I decided to somewhat emulate the animations I did on the previous product animations. It came out looking pretty good, I'm happy with the final product. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Before I show you the finished product, be sure to subscribe. On day 14, I decided to stay with CG Cookie. With the help of Jonathan Lample, we're going to be modeling a Game Boy lookalike. Also on day 14, I edited my interface. Now back to the video. We started off by importing some reference images. Using the reference images was a game changer. It helped speed up the workflow, also it made us work more precisely. This was a good tutorial to build my foundation of Blender. I didn't struggle too much with this tutorial. We did a lot of the same routines over and over so it did build my muscle memory up. After all the modeling, we're going to shade smooth the object, then we're going to add some colors to our model. I decided to go with a blue for the base and gray for the buttons. Then we're going to color the screen black and heighten the metallic so it can be more realistic. After recently doing a Pokemon tutorial, I thought it would be perfect to add a Pokemon Emerald label onto our cartridge. I used UV unwrapping to do this. We're going to repeat that process. We're going to add the same thing but just do it to our screen and we're going to add a Pokemon loading screen to it. Now we're at the finishing part of the project. We're just going to add some lighting in the background and that's going to be it. I decided to go with a dark bronze color for the background to contrast the Game Boy. That's going to be it for day 14. I enjoyed making this Game Boy console. Also, feel free to comment what was your favorite Game Boy game back in the days. On day 15, I decided to go back to YouTube. I decided to do Ryan King's art tutorial on making a teacup scene. I highly recommend this tutorial. This was a really good tutorial on making a nice scene. Also, it taught us a new technique to get a nice outline. Before starting my Blender challenge, I never knew you could get an outline on a 3D model. I just never thought of it. Very impressed with the final look though. It gave the scene an anime style. I can definitely see myself using this in personal projects in the future. Now back to the video. We're going to continue modeling the cup by adding some details. We're going to add some loop cuts and bevels and everything's coming together real nicely. Like I mentioned in the mushroom tutorial, Ryan goes at a very nice pace and his tutorials are very easy to follow. After modeling the cup, we're going to add some more items to the scene, including the background. We're going to add a teapot and then on top of that we're going to add some more details to it and shade smooth. Next, we're going to add two plain objects to get the napkins. After that, we're going to add a cloth 
and a collision modifier to make it look like it's a fabric on the table. Then we're going to duplicate that, but we're going to switch it up with the edits to make it look like it's a different cloth. Then we're going to add an environment HDRI to give our scene better lighting. Then we're going to go to shading mode and add some color to our objects. I learned a new technique to make the objects look like it was cell shaded. This came out real nice. Then we're just going to copy that material to the other objects. Now we're going to add some texture to the table using the Yamaji nose. And we're also going to add texture to our napkins as well. Also another good tip that I learned during this tutorial was to manage your geometry nodes to keep them in order because they can get real confusing the more you use. After adding all the textures to our objects, we're going to add some more shadows. Then we're going to add the juice to the teacup. To get the juice texture was really simple. All we did was copy the table texture on top of the juice, but we modified the noise texture and changed the color. After we get all that where we want, we're going to add some more shadows to the juice. Now we're going to add the finishing touches. We're going to use a solidify modifier to get a nice outline around the teapot and the teacup. Then we're just going to add a scene for our background. And that's going to be it for day 15. I had a lot of fun making this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this one just as much as I did. Also, feel free to comment the projects in order which ones you like the most. And most importantly, subscribe. On to day 16, the final day for this episode. I found a nice product tutorial animation by mainlean.mp4. Started this tutorial off by modeling two different pieces of ice. Then we're going to use our geometry nodes to get the ice to look more realistic. The next step will be parenting the ice cubes to a plain object. This is going to be so we can get the objects to move around our bottle. I was really impressed with how this animation came out. We're also going to use an emitter to get the particles to float around the bottle and look more realistic and natural. This tutorial was very helpful for upgrading my technique using keyframes. This tutorial was very simple and fast, but the finished product was fantastic. And that's going to be it for day 16. I'm very excited with this one and I'm happy that I held this one for last. And that's going to be it for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment. Also subscribe. This took a lot of energy and effort. Stay tuned for part three. We're going to ramp things up even more. I also want to give a major shout out to everyone who made it to the end of this video. I'm very excited for the future. See you guys next time.